Hey everyone, welcome back to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2018. I'm Mike, here with Lucy. Hello. We'll be here all week, and we are about to talk about the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. We're here with Michelle, the co-game director. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome to be here uh, at E3 to, to present uh, Captain Spirit. We're extremely happy to be able to show what we have been doing for a long time now, because for the past two years we've been working on Life is Strange 2. Yeah. Um, and we will talk about Life is Strange 2 soon in the, in the coming months. Um, but here we, we are, we're showing um, the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, which is a, a free standalone um, experience that takes place in the same setting, universe, and timeline as, as Life is Strange 2. And so basically it will be the first entry point um, um, for the players to what Life is Strange 2 will be. Mm -hmm. Because if you play, search in the game, look for clues, there will be definitely hints and clues to the characters, the setting, and what will be Life is Strange 2. Did you know before you set out to start uh, Life is Strange 2 that you were going to do this kind of uh, prologue, so to, so to speak? So, no, we didn't know at first. Um, the way we create games um, with uh, Raoul Barbez, the other creative director, is that we like to think of, a so of, a really of the story, the characters, and while we were working on this big story that we'll experience in Life is Strange too, there were some elements from it that we thought that could really work also as standalone experience. And we felt that telling this story of Chris uh, and Captain Spirit was really a great, a great gift for the players and a great way to get immersed and to get, to get your first steps into, into li what Life is Strange 2 will be. Mm. I was going to say, and it's free as well. So how, like, and uh, even looking at the trailers, you're like, it's free. It will always be free. Yeah. How important was that for you to get players on board? So we're we're extremely happy that we are able to to give this this gift for free to the players um, because it's really a full contained experience. So there is a beginning, there is an ending, and. Definitely, if you didn't play Life is Strange 1, if you, if you don't want to play Life is Strange 2, it's still okay. You will experience really this story, those characters, and hopefully you will find that it's a, it's a great experience by itself. But of course, it's also, there is a lot of small secrets and nods to the first Life is Strange. So for the fans of Life is Strange, they will find some, some elements that we hope they will be happy with. And if the players love Captain Spirit, we hope also that it's a way for them to bring them to want to try Life is Strange 2 later. Right. We also think that you know, the narrative, narrative experience, narrative genre, is something that sometimes the players, you have some players who think, this is not my, my sort of game. So if you give something like this for free, maybe they can try it. And I don't know, maybe some new players will see that it might still be interesting to play the, those kind of games and maybe they would want to, to see more with the other Life is Strange. Right. Can you talk about the character we'll be playing as? Yeah. So in Captain Spirit, you're playing as Chris, who is um, a young kid. Of, he's almost 10, and he has a really vivid imagination. And uh, basically, you're playing on this Saturday morning. Uh, it's almost Christmas, and he has a lot of free time because his dad is just watching a basketball game. And you can do basically whatever you want on this Saturday morning. So um, it, it's some sort of a small narrative sandbox where you can, for example, decide do you want to play with your toys in your room? Do you want to help your dad um, with, with cleaning the house or stuff like that? Do you want to go outside and play with snowballs or go to your treehouse? And for us, we hope that it's a way, there is a lot of replay value because you can definitely miss a lot of things in your first playthrough. There is some sort of a timeline. So um, you, if you're not at the right moment, uh, at the right place, you will miss some elements that we might, you might want to, to experience again. And the idea is that Chris is using his imagination. He loves to think he's a superhero. Uh, he somehow used imagination to escape um, the day-to-day -day life and some of the darker issues he might be facing. This is really the core theme of the game. So how imagination is a power by itself to somehow get better with your life and escape some of the difficulties of, uh, of what's around you. Yeah, so we saw in the trailer, obviously, Chris's dad is, is drinking, and he's like, I'm not going to be lectured to by my son. Is it just going to be the relationship with his dad that's going to be explored? There was a, a mention of his mother. So that's also the goal of, uh, of the story, that by pushing the player to 
become Captain Spirit and go into this kid's imagination, you will discover much more of the reality of, of Chris, of his father, of the family. And there is hints everywhere, like, like in, the, in the first Life is Strange, where you can just explore the environment and discover documents, letters. So you will definitely, if you're looking, um, get to know what happens to his mother, what, why uh, his dad is drinking and stuff like that. But it's really up for the player to decide how he wants to explore this and what kind of information he wants to get. Or if he just wants to stay in his room and play, that's also something he can definitely do. Um, that's, we hope that the players will really love to explore all this and find the different paths and the different also imaginary worlds that you can explore. Mm. I'm curious what kind of gameplay uh, possibilities you get to explore. I mean, it, it's almost like limitless, right, with his imagination? Um, so in, in terms of gameplay, it's, a, it's still a, a Life is Strange game. So sure. there are exploration, interactions, dialogue, and um, a lot of environmental, environmental storytelling. But we're, since Chris um, thinks he's a superhero, there is also this new mechanic where on several interactions, you can just press the trigger and play with his superpower. Um, so some are quite simple, where you can just you know, um, go to the fireplace and just imagine that you're making fire out of your hand. Like, I mean, as a kid would pretend. Uh, and I think we all did that at some moment, to just imagine we were making things, things fly or stuff like that. But there is also moments on the gameplay where you can go much more deeper into your imagination and visit those kind of uh, parallel universe, which are imaginary worlds, mm -hmm. um, which some will be easier to find than others uh, in the game. So obviously, Max, in the original Life is Strange, had the ability to rewind time. What other powers were you looking at when you uh, were developing Chris? Like, you were saying that it's, it's the powers that people imagined they would have as a kid. Yeah, it's, it's basically the power of imagination. Yeah. And we also have to play to play the story to discover what's more about it. So I cannot, every, of course, I cannot say everything about it. It's, it's around, I would say, the, the, it's around two hours of, of gameplay, but there is a lot of replay value. So definitely, it's a game that has been designed to be played a bit several times. We also had in mind the community that a lot of different players would have different experiences they could right. share together uh, online on the on the social networks. So there is, yeah, it's a. I would say it's more than two hours, but depending on how you play it, it can be a bit less, it can be way more. And there is definitely ending and uh, some, some secrets that you will find that I cannot tell about today. So obviously, Life is Strange took place in Arcadia Bay. Where are we going to be geographically? So Captain Spirit takes place um, in Oregon, no. um, in, an, in a new small town called Beaver Creek. Mm -hmm. um, it's not too far away from Arcadia Bay. It's like um, uh, more, but much more in the, um, in the east of Oregon, near yeah. the mountains and, uh, and the forest. Um, and yeah, if you look hard enough in, in the game, you will definitely find some hints and links with Arcadia Bay. Or if you look hard enough, we'll see a lighthouse just on the distance. Oh, oh maybe the lighthouse is too far away. <laughs> Uh, what was it that made you, why like the power of imagination, why Chris, when like, I mean obviously you have your characters established in uh, Life is Strange and you have characters people are expecting you to see in Life is Strange too. What was it that pulled you to this, what you said like nine year old boy, almost 10 year old, what is it about that point in his life that you thought supplemented the Life is Strange story so well? It's, I think it's a good question, but the way we are creating our games is uh, um, for us, uh, Life is Strange is about um, relatable characters that are really anchored in real life and where we can use their normal existence and experience to also talk about uh, some, so, some social subjects, some, some darker themes uh, that, that are interesting for us. So we, de we dealt with a lot of those themes in the first Life is Strange. And when we, are, we were working on Life is Strange 2 and on Captain Spirit, we were also thinking what kind of new characters and new situations we want to bring to the community to also give some light on those new, new themes and uh, new situations we wanted to talk about. And since we've all been kids at the point, having this story about what it is to be a kid somehow uh, just by himself, uh, quite lonely and with his dad not really taking care of him, it's something that's interesting to see that how kids can overcome loneliness with the imagination, but also because it's also a great way to talk about those issues of, of loneliness, of uh, um, um, even of uh, alcoholism with the dad, and 
Mm. I, w I, want to, I, want, I won't spoil all the themes we are dealing with, but uh, we all, always try to find the great characters and the good story to talk about those themes. Mm. And um, there is links with what you will have in Life is Strange 2. I cannot explain what those links are, but definitely why we did choose this as a reason for Life is Strange 2. And one of the things you do, and what I really loved about Life is Strange, is the way that the emotional beats were backed up with music, whether it be licensed or whether an original score. What are you doing for uh, Captain Spirit? So you've heard um, in the trailer, you've, um, there is one song in the trailer from uh, Sylvian Stevens. Um, I think the song is called Death with Dignity. It's in the trailer and it plays a quite important part in, in the game, um, where you will hear this song in the introduction in different story moments. And of course, the lyrics were important for us in a way that you will understand when play, playing the story. Um, there is uh, two other uh, licensed tracks uh, in Captain Spirit that you will have to discover. And um, we're really happy to have those because one of, it, one of them is from a French artist we really like, which yeah. is also important for us as, as a French studio to try also to sh push sometimes French, French artists that we really like. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's been the, the studio split uh, working on Captain Spirit and working on Life is Strange 2? So um, it's really the same team uh, working on Captain Spirit and Life is Strange 2. It's really a common development. I mean, we, work, we were working on both at the same yeah. time. Um, it's the same, same new engine, same technology. So it's really a side story that we are really crafting at the same moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so the team is the same team that worked on Life is Strange 1 uh, at Dontnod. Um, we, there, are other, there are other teams on the studio working on other projects like Vampire or Twin Mirrors, but the team on, uh, on Captain Spirit and Life is Strange Suite is, uh, is really m most of it the same team as the first Life is Strange. Yeah, the studio has so many projects in the works. Uh, what is it like, you know, like coordinating all that? Um, I think the team are quite separate, so it's yeah. more of having uh, multiple different teams. Yeah. And uh, we are, of, co of course, um, using uh, Unreal Engine 4 for all of the projects, so we can still share some knowledge and some advance on the technology. But overall, it's really uh, different directors and writers for all of the, all, all of the different teams. Right. What's been the biggest challenge in creating Captain Spirit? I think, I think the biggest challenge is uh, writing for a kid, uh, trying to make it believable, because we, all, we, we were all kids, but we were kids like 20 or 30 years ago, depends on the age of, of the guy in the team. So having a kid nowadays, in uh, the game takes place in 2016. Um, so we need also to make, of course, to make a lot of research. Um, the big challenge was to find the good actors for uh, motion capture and, uh, and, and voice actor. And we are extremely happy of the two kids we found uh, that also they, um, they themselves they brought a lot to the characters. Uh, I mean, when, when we go to voice recording sessions, uh, each time I make sure that uh, the kid playing, uh, playing Chris is also reading the, reading the lines. And I let, I let him adjust, adjust them if, if they feel weird for him. Yeah. Because even if we try our best to, to document yourself, to, to make sure that we write them in a believable way, it's still better to have a kid uh, proof check what you did right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Michelle, when can people get their hands on the, um, the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit? Sorry? When can people play? When? When can people play oh, uh, okay, the awesome sorry. adventures of Captain Spirit? So people Spirit? can play it um, on the 26th of June Great. on Xbox, PS4, and PC. And it's completely free. So I hope that a lot of players will, will try it and hopefully enjoy it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for Thanks joining so us on stage you. and have a good rest of uh, your E3 week. I'm sure you'll Thanks be busy. Thanks, you too. And everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch, or at GameSpot, we will be right back with Smash Bros. So stick around. <laughs>